Hi, so for section 8.4, or um, also known as hypothesis testing for proportions, we're going to run through the following example. So a poll asked college students in 2016 and again in 2017 whether they believed the First Amendment guaranteed a freedom of the press was secure or threatened in the country today. In 2016, 200, or I'm sorry, 2,470 of 3,060 students surveyed said that freedom of the press was secure or very secure. In 2017, 1,780 of 2,033 students surveyed felt this way. So we want to complete the following. And the first thing we want to do is set up a hypothesis test. Okay. And we just want to know if the numbers between 2016 and 2017 are different. So here's the setup. So in 2016, which I'm going to call population one, what we saw was that we saw 2,470 out of 3,060 3, had this opinion. Versus in 2017, which I'm going to call population two, we had 1780 out of 2033. Now, here's what the null and alternative hypothesis are. Our null hypothesis, when we're looking at two populations instead of one, is we're always going to assume that the populations are the same. So we're going to assume that P1 equals P2. Our alternative hypothesis, well, if we read the question again, there was no statement that led us to think that one population was going to be greater than or less than the other population. What that means is that we're probably just testing if they are different, aka not equal. Now, before we run into finding the z-test statistic and all of that, there's actually another way to write this. Now, another way to write these is to move P2 over to one side. So subtract P2 from both sides. And that is going to tell us that the difference between these two is zero. So if these are the same, if we subtract the two, we're going to get zero. If we do this here and subtract P2 from both sides, we're going to get that the difference between them is not zero. This detail is going to come in handy when we do this on StatCrunch or on just any typical software. And again, when we look at the confidence interval. So the first thing we want to do is identify the test statistic. That is, we want to find the z-score. So to do that, we're going to head over to StatCrunch, since this is pretty, um, pretty math heavy and honestly not really worth doing by hand. So you're going to go to Stat, Proportion Stats. We're doing two samples now, because we have P1 and P2, and we're doing it with a summary. Now, sample one, you want to make sure that's your population one. So it's going to be 2470. Number of observations was 3060, 1780, and 2033. When you go down the hypothesis test, you want to make sure that these are the same. So P1 minus P2 is 0. That's always going to be the case. And P1 minus P2 is not equal to 0. Remember, that's going to change depending on what your alternative hypothesis is, whether you think one proportion is less than or greater than the other one. We're going to hit Compute. And what we're going to see is we're going to see a z's test statistic of negative 6.428. That's actually a pretty big test statistic. OK, so I'm going to assume even before I look at the other part that we're probably going to end up rejecting H0. All right. And our p value, it says less than 0 0.001. So that means that it's pretty darn close to 0. All right, so we have our p-value and we have our test statistics to interpret the p-value. So since our p-value is so low, we reject H0. What that means is there is significant or Sometimes we say sufficient evidence that there is a difference. OK, 
between 2016 and 2017. So as we move from one population, which was measured in 2016, to another population, which was measured in 2017, we can see that there is actually a measurable and significant difference between the two. Now, the next question that we're going to see in this section is asking us to construct a confidence interval for the difference in proportions of the college students. So real quick, our alternative, or I'm sorry, our null hypothesis was that the difference between these two was zero. So when we construct a confidence interval, if the difference is zero, that should probably be somewhere on the interval, okay? So for example, if our confidence interval was between negative 0 0.05 and positive 0 0.03, well, zero is on that interval. So that means that our null hypothesis has some standing of being correct. However, if our confidence interval was say between 0 0.07 and 0 0.15, well, zero is not in between those two numbers. So it's probably not supporting our null hypothesis. Now, here's how you're gonna create a confidence interval using StatCrunch. Again, it's complicated to do it by hand, so we're just going to use technology. So you're going to go to the exact same place you did to do the hypothesis test. You're going to go stat, proportion stats, two samples with summary. You're going to enter the data the exact same way you did before. However, instead of clicking hypothesis test, you're going to go ahead and hit confidence interval. Make sure you change that confidence interval to the level you want. So on our example, we want a 90% confidence interval. We're going to hit compute, and here we have our lower limit and our upper limit. So those are going to be the intervals. So for our example, our lower limit for a confidence interval at 90% is going to be between negative 0.085 and negative 0.051. So does this support our hypothesis test conclusion? The answer is no, because zero is not on this interval. So we would say no, because zero is not on our confidence interval we have evidence to reject H naught. Another thing is that we could say we have evidence to support our hypothesis test conclusion. So again, just to reiterate, remember our null hypothesis said that the difference between these two is zero. Our confidence interval said, hey, the difference between P1 and P2 is probably somewhere between negative 0.085, AKA negative eight and a half percent, and negative 0.051 or negative 5%. So the confidence interval says that the difference between these two populations is somewhere between 8% and 5%, not the 0% like our null hypothesis stated.